do you think that the geologists they they feel inferior to uh, physicists? Um, they might if they talk to some physicists, but I think most geologists don't care. They're just happy doing what they do, and they know what they do works, and so they don't care about it. They might care if the physicists were taking all the money <laughs> and they got no money to do their work. Then they might care, and they might have to learn some philosophy to uh, uh, counter what the physicists were doing. Uh, but the physicists these days have their own problem because the biologists are getting all the money. <laughs> uh, so I, I think uh, uh, geologists will continue to do geology. There, there will always be geology because the resources that on which humankind depends have a geological basis. Uh, everything we do on the planet, uh, all of our energy supply, all of our soils, they're all ultimately related to geology. So geology won't go away. Yeah, but society, society would react differently if uh, society is taught by geologists about what geology means. Oh, yeah. I, I think um, there would be a completely different understanding of science Uh, basically, at the extreme end of science is physics, which is really about m saying the best things we can say about nature. The, the word physics comes from the Greek physis, uh, nature, and but it is about saying about nature, and physics uses mathematics to make the statements about nature. And then ultimately in physics you have to make that statement match nature, so you do an experiment. But the experiment that you have to do is a controlled experiment. And that can be done on something that is idealized like uh, measuring gravity. But if you want to do geology and you're interested in how mountains are built, you can't put building a mountain in a laboratory. So in geology, we have to, uh, we can't do experiments in that same way. But the other thing is, geology is ultimately about what nature is saying to us, not what we say. Uh, and it, geology doesn't get the statement from nature by an experiment. It gets it from observations of the signs, that is nature's language, which are rocks, fossils, sediments, Uh, geological structures, all the kinds of stuff that geologists look at are all indications of the natural world that stimulate the geologist who has sufficient experience to formulate a causal hypothesis as to how those things come about. And in generating that hypothesis, you have the essence of what geology is really trying to do. It's, it's trying to understand causally how the relationships of the natural world come about through a sequence in time and in all their connections and relationships to the other things in the world. That last point is important because in physics you have to make an artificial uh, demarcation from the world in order to apply mathematics. You can't apply mathematics unless you have a system. And the system is a defined set of objects and inner relationships that has boundaries on it. It's called an isolated system. Then you can use equations in mathematics. The problem is not that the equations in mathematics aren't good and, or that they're, they're wrong. They're, they're obviously going to be great. But the assumption you make to use the mathematics is the problem because you have to make a separation from the whole world to do that. And what you leave out is what can cause the problem. Geology doesn't leave things out because it's trying to see what the world says to us. So this makes it a little more vague and less precise than all this mathematical stuff, which is great, but that great preciseness can just be precisely wrong. And if you don't know if it's right or wrong because you don't have a perfectly controlled experiment, you're sort of left with, a, with an unresolved issue.